So, maraming salamat po, Attorney James. And magandang hapon po sa kanilang lahat. Our President, for CM for Makati, uh, Kuya Bobby, and uh, uh, our President for Pasay, uh, Malibay, no, Kuya Adan, and Brother Miko, no, our Administrator, CFB President for the entire Metro Manila, and all our officers uh, present here. And uh, Brother David Palyarca, David Michael, the President of CFB in Nueva Ecija. And I am so honored to be here. This is my second time and my, my third visit actually, but this is my second time to speak. And I am so happy to present to you the sacred scripture and the church. This is a very important topic. Alam po naman natin na ang differences natin with the Protestants ay dalawang major topic. One is faith alone, and that is very important because the issue is about salvation. At ang ikalawa naman ay Bible alone. No, in Latin, ng faith alone ay sola fide, at ang Latin ng Bible alone ay sola scriptura. Ngayon, para sa kanila, ang Biblia lang ang bukod tayong basihan ng pananampalataya. At siya lamang ang dapat nating pagkunan ng kung ano ang ating dapat paniwalaan at kung ano ang kinakailangan natin para maligtas. Subalit yan ay of course ay tinutunulan ng ating simbahan. Dahil unang-una ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo hindi nagbigay sa atin ang Biblia. But rather He founded the church. No, lagi nilang sinasabi, the Bible is the Word of God. That is only the written word of God. But the, the word of God is not limited to what is written. Because first and foremost, the word of God is a person. And that person is Jesus. Okay, second, so, eh, yan ay word of God. Mahalaga ang word of God. But remember that the church is the body of Christ. It is the body of the incarnate God. Ano ba mas mahalaga? Yung boses mo, yung salita mo, o yung katawan mo? Pareho. <laughs> Pareho. You cannot say your word is not important. That is an insult to your person. Hindi rin pwedeng evaluate ang body mo. Abuse yun. <laughs> Di ba? And so we have to respect and love and accept the word of God. But at the same time, we also have to accept the authority of the church as the body of Christ. Now, before going into the theology proper, I just want to give you a short presentation of the history of the Bible. Kasi ang akala natin, we are already so used, okay, the Bible is the word of God, ayan, and dyan na. This book, as we have it today, is a product of thousands of years of process that the church had done in order to canonize it. Ibig sabihin ng canonize, then it piliin kung ano yung mga, sali, mga aklat na tunay na salita ng Diyos, i-reject ang mga peke, at kinakailangan walang makahalo heresiya at mali sa anuman sa, sa mga aklat na ito. At higit sa lahat, bigyan ng opisyal na determinasyon kung ano ba talaga ang mga aklat na pwede natin ituring na salita ng Diyos. Oh, so that is what they call canonization. So sa, yung term na ka, canon, napakatindi, bihirang-bihirang gamitin yan sa, sa, sa Santa Iglesia. Ginagamit lang yan doon sa Eucharistic Canon. Ibig sabihin niya, ang formula na pwedeng gamitin ng pare para mag-consecrate ng tinapay at alak na magiging katawan at tubo ni Kristo. Hindi ka pwedeng gumamit siya ng kung ano formula na invent mo lang sa tabi-tabi. Hindi tatalang. Ha? Isa pang himal, kay Muster na pinagagamitan niya, canonization. Official declaration na isang tao ay tunay na santo at nasa langit at may kapangyarihan maging intercessor ng ating pananampalataya. Kaya pag sinabi natin, yan si St. Lorenzo Luis, canonized saint yan. 
We are 100% sure na nasa heaven yan. And since He is a 100% in heaven, He intercedes to God on our behalf. Ah, so napakahalaga nun. Ah, yan ang infallible act. And so therefore, the Pope also, when determining the list of the books of the Bible, he also used the same power. The same power that the church has to transform the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And to officially declare that heaven is open and we are sure that the same is there inside in front of the throne of God. And so therefore, <laughs> okay. Okay. So therefore, we have to start with a process of canonization because the Bible is a Catholic book. This is not a Protestant book. Bago lumitaw si, si Felix Manano, si Ellen Goldwhite ng Seventh-day Adventist, si Charles Taze Russell ng Jehovah Witnesses, si Emmy Soriano, at si Martin Luther, may Biblia na. Okay? And they are using this to deceive our people and to lure our faithful to abandon the Catholic faith to go to their newly invented sects. And therefore, we have to learn the history of the sacred scripture. Now, the canon of the scriptures. Okay. So we have to start. This is St. Athanasius, the great. You know him as a Catholic apologist, the best defender of the faith concerning the divinity of the Lord Jesus, the one who defeated the heresy of Arianism that denies the divinity of Jesus. Okay. So si, si St. Athanasius ang kauna-unahan say na nagbigay ng listahan the 27 books of the New Testament. Uh, the 27. So that's in the year 367, the Catholic bishop and great apologist against Arian heresy, St. Athanasius of Alexandria is the church founded by St. Mark. Okay? So St. Mark is the first bishop of Alexandria. He was the first person in history to list the 27 books of the New Testament. At, uh, he gave it in his festal epistle, no, in his homily for Easter uh, celebrations. Okay? So, we know that there are 27 books in the New Testament because of St. Athanasius. Next slide, please. Now, St. Athanasius, bishop and doctor of the church, was the first to use the term canon to specify the content of the New Testament. It may, he used the term canon to signify that these are not ordinary books. These are officially inspired by God, that they are sacred, and they are, they are under the custody and authority of the church. Okay, so the, the source for that is the, the book uh, Evangelical Exodus no, by, uh, uh, published by the Ignatius Press. And also concerning the Old Testament, St. Athanasius also recognized the Deuterocanonical, the seven books that are not listed in the books, you know, in the list of books of the Bible by Martin Luther. Uh, so remember, uh, uh, Catholic Bible has 73 books, 46 Old Testament, 27 New Testament. Sa Protestant, 39 books lang ang Old Testament nila. Kaya ang total, 66 sa ating 73. So sabi ng mga protestante, dinagdagan daw natin ang Biblia, hindi natin dinagdagan, sila ang nagbawas. Because from the time of St. Athanasius, it is already well established 
that the seven books removed by Martin Luther was part of the original canon. And that is recognized from apostolic times. Next point, please. Now, after St. Athanasius, there is a document na laging ginagamit ng Protestant debater na si Dr. James White. Sabi niya, you know, wala kami pakialam sa Santo Papa niyo, wala kami pakialam kay Pope St. Damasus, kay Athanasius, at iba pa, even before Athanasius, sabi niya, merong document na tinatawag na Moratorian Fragment or Moratorian Canon. And the list of the books of the Bible are already listed there. Oh, yes, that's true. However, the Moratorian Canon was recently discovered. And at the same time, the Moratorian Fragment is also a Catholic document, not born again document. Uh, let, us, let us go to the point. The Moratorian Fragment is also a Catholic and not a born again evangelical document. It is a 7th century Latin manuscript bound in codex from the library of St. Jose Columbanus Bobbio Abbey in Italy. It was discovered in the Ambrosian Library in Milan. You know Milan, uh, where St. Ambrose and St. Augustine, siyaan bininyagan si St. Augustine. Uh, siyaan nangaral si St. Ambrose. Okay? And it was discovered by a Catholic priest, Father Ludovico Antonio Muratore. At sa kanya ay pinangalan niya, the most famous Italian historian of his generation and published in 1740. And so therefore, the Muratorian fragment is also a Catholic document. And it has nothing to do with the Protestants. They cannot use that against us. It also added to the fact that it was the Catholic Church that gave us the list of the official books of the Bible. Next uh, page, please. Okay, this is the one of the, the, the Abbey where it was uh, found. It contains pictures suggesting it is a translation from a Greek original, about 170. But that, that the Greek original is nowhere to be found. The fragment consists of all that remains of a section of a list of all the works that were accepted as canonical by the churches known to its original compiler. It means 170, that is the churches that are apostolic no? in origin. Ano, ano yun, yun? Rome, Corinth, Ephesus, Thessalonica, etc. Okay. Now, it listed only 22 out of the 27 canonical books of the New Testament. So, hindi pa rin yan complete. Mas kompleto si St. Athanasius. Oh, that, mas kompleto yung kay St. Athanasius. Because during that time, the book of the Epistle of Jude okay, is still contested. And even the book of Revelation was still contested, but it declares Jesus as Lord, and He is equated with God. Okay. Next point, please. The first complete Bible in one common language. Remember, the Old Testament was written originally in Hebrew. But that Hebrew Bible is the Bible of the Pharisees. Take note of that. Now, later on, the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek. That is what we call the Septuagint Bible. Okay? The Septuagint. That is the Greek Bible. And that Greek Septuagint is the one used by the apostles in all their quotations for the New Testament. Okay? So, that is the Septuagint. And so, and the New Testament is in Koine Greek. Now, so, my Hebrew and my Greek. Now, during the time of St. Pope Damasus, uh, sabi niya, the entire world, the Roman Empire, is now growing into a Latin-speaking 
empire. Because great became famous all over the world because of the Hellenistic civilization of Alexander the Great. But Alexander the Great died young. And the Hellenistic Empire was divided into four generals. Okay. And later on, the Greek Empire was defeated by the Roman Empire of Julius Caesar. And which became prominent with Octavian Augustus, the emperor that brought Pax Romana all over the Roman Empire. No, he, co he conquered everything, including Egypt, and then he subdued everything. Okay. And so the entire Roman Empire was united into one leadership under Octavian Augustus, and he was a good emperor, no, excellent administrator. Okay. And so Greek civilization diminished in influence, and Latin influence started growing. And so Pope St. Damasus, during the 4th century, commanded that his secretary, the best biblical scholar of the time, and the best uh, linguist, you know, he's fluent in Greek, in Hebrew, in Latin, to translate the entire Bible into one language, and that is Latin. So the first complete Bible in the history of the world was the Latina Vulgata, the Latin Vulgate, translated by St. Jerome, priest and doctor of the church. Okay. And that was the year 405. He was the secretary of the Pope and the best Bible scholar and linguist of the patristic era. So kaya yung Biblia buo na kagaya nito is started and was realized under Pope St. Damasus and done by a Catholic priest, St. Jerome, no, the doctor of the church. Okay? And that's an example of the Latina Vulgata you know, in, in the ancient medieval uh, uh, calligraphy. Next page, please. Okay, that is Pope Saint Jerome. Uh, that is uh, Saint Jerome, the doctor. So Pope Saint Damasus ordered Saint Jerome to translate the entire Bible from original Hebrew and Greek to the common language of the empire, Latin. Now that is Saint Jerome translating the Bible into Latin in a cave in Holy Land. Okay, bakit siya may katabing ngayon? Because one time, he was writing, a lion entered the cave. Okay, and instead of running away, all his secretaries ran away, you know, of fear, but Saint Jerome went to the lion and castigated him, and told him, now look at you, you are very dirty, and you are full of blood. Huh? So you are always killing another, and so you must you must behave. And he found out that the lion has a thorn, you know, in his paw. No, he was suffering. He was limping. He removed the thorn, and because of that, the lion always stays with him. He became his pet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that that's true. That's historical. That is part of the life of Saint Jerome, no? Like Saint Francis, uh, like Saint uh, Anthony the Abbot, he has a so great spirituality that even the forces of nature are tame in front of him, no? Para Saint Francis, kahit na di ba nakunta siya sa Middle East. Para kausapin yung sultan, malayo pa siya, pinakawala yung mga leopard para kainin siya. Pagdating sa kanya na yung leopard, hinalik-halikan siya ng mga leopard. No, it's like that. No, leopard. Okay. And another, he's famous for his spirituality of getting a stone, no, and pinching his breast, saying, Lord, have pity on me, a sinner. 
doon kinuha sa kanya kinuha yung sabi sa natin na true by fault true by fault true by most previous fault yung inaano no uh, uh, yeah we are we are we are tinukok natin yung ating gigdil no sa pagtanda ng pagsisisi sa Panginoon the tradition came from St. Jerome, the priest and doctor of the church, and the greatest Bible scholar in the history of the church. Next point, please. Now, in the year 382, Pope Damas was the first called and presided at the Council of Rome. And in that Roman Council, the canon of the sacred scriptures was first established and set in officially. Okay. So, sino ang nagdetermina ng listahan ng mga atla? It was the Roman Council. Ibig sabihin, ang Roman Council nagpatawag, pinatawag niya ang lahat ng mga pare at mga clergy and experts of the Church of Rome. Yeah? And then, under his leadership, under his leadership, decided which books are to be included in the Bible and which are to be set aside. Now, take note, lagi itong issue, issue kay Dan Brown, issue ng mga, ng mga heretics, sinasabi na mayroon daw mga Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Gospel of St. Peter, Gospel of James. They were not included. Bakit? Kasi peke. No, they are fakes. Paano natin nalamang peke? Number one, they contain heresies. Okay? Ikalawa, they were written not by the apostles. They were written when the apostles, all apostles were already dead 200 years ago. Nung sila ay naisulat. Ikalawa, lahat yung buong Biblia nakasulat sa Koine Greek dahil yun ang language ng mga apostles. Nakasulat sila sa Coptic language. Ibig sabihin, that is a language na hindi, hindi yung lingwahe ng mga apostol. Hindi lingwahe na ginamit nila, nila Mateo, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, ibig sabihin, it belongs to another culture. At the church knows that they were written by heretics that are enemies of the church during that time. Ano ang tawag sa kanila? Gnostic sects. Mga sekta ng Gnostics. Okay. So, mga ganun bagay. So, merong, merong, merong isang merong isang um, document na si Jesus daw naglalaro na yung batang Jesus naglaro kumuha ng puti kinortihan niyang ibon tapos naging ibon at pinalipad niya you know? so sabi ng simbahan natin that is unacceptable lahat ng miracle ni Jesus done in the gospels are not done for play they are done in relation to salvation. <laughs> uh, walang, hindi, walang part ng mission of Jesus. Kaya yan ay isang katawatawang ano, no, account which is unbelievable. Another thing, naglalaro si Jesus. Pagkatapos yung isang kalaro niya, inaway siya. So sinabihan siya kayo ng child Jesus. Dahil ginawa mo yan, mamamatay ka. Namatay yung bata. Now, the Lord Jesus will never do that. Diba? Kahit na pinapatay na siya, nakapakaw na sa krus. Hindi niya pa rin sinaktan ang mga pare sa iyo. Hindi niya pa rin sinaktan si Herodes. Ah? Hinayaan niya insultuhin siya. Oh? Ganyan yung simbaha natin. Kahit insultuhin tayo, hindi naman tayo pwedeng gumante. Ah? Pag sinabihan ng mga pare natin at mga obispo, mga, oh, yeah, mga obispo, mga ipokrito, Bakit? Hindi naman sasagot si Karin ng Tagli na ipokrito ka rin. Hindi ba? Ang Karin ng Tagli, kanto na lang pansinin. Focus lang tayo sa mission natin. Ganun kasi mahal. Okay. 
ha? So, ibang-iba sa kultura ng Santa Iglesia. Okay. Next, this is Pope St. Damasus. Ha? In 393 AD, the bishops of North Africa gathered in the council. So, the, the first is Council of Rome. Now, this time, the Council of Hippo in North Africa. Remember, Hippo, yan ang diocese ni St. Augustine. Augustine of Hippo. Dalawa ang pinakama, tatlo ang pinakamatindi diocese sa North Africa during that time. Remember, Alexandria in Egypt. Second ay Carthage, kuna sana doon si St. Cyprian. Sumunod, so, Hippo, St. Augustine. So yan ay napaka, yan ang mga malalakit mga diocese during those time. And of course, they cannot oppose the decision of the Council of Rome. So the Council of Hippo affirmed and accepted the decision of Pope Damas. So syempre, kapag inopose sila ang Pope, excommunicated sila. Ah, hindi nila pwedeng hindi nila pwedeng kontrahin 'yon. Ah, para sa Council of Jerusalem when St. Peter stood up, all debates ended. Ah, all debates ended. And when he made the decision, all the rest followed. Okay. The same thing sa Council of Chalcedon. Okay. So when Pope when the letter of Pope St. Leo the Great the tome of St. Leo the Great was read. All bishops of the entire council of Calcino Peter has spoken to true Leo. And so his letter became a document of the council and all, well, everything that he stated became the decision of the council. So that's it. When, once the Pope has spoken, all debates and then, Okay, so they affirm what was given in the Council of Rome. Next page, please. In 405, the first upheld the list of the same canon of the scriptures. 73 books, 27 New Testament, and 46 New Testament, Old Testament. Okay. So, makikita natin, the church is consistent. Ha? Yan ay sacred tradition. Hindi pwedeng baliit. Next. Okay, on February 4, this is 1442 already. Ha? Wala pang mga protestante during that time. Kasi 16th century lilitaw si Martin Luther. Uh, the entire church already recognized for hundreds of years that list of canon. And then, and then, nag-umpisa namang mag-away itong mga Eastern bishops, mga Orthodox, nagsimula. This is what had happened. So when Constantine became emperor, he legalized Christianity. So previously, yung mga Catholic sa pinakakain sa liyon, pinupumutan ng ulo, ah, pinapapatay sa 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 kulisiyo, sa gladiators uh, um, uh, area, ngayon, they are already free to express and live their faith. Okay. However, because of that, during the time of Constantine, the Roman Empire became so big because he defeated his, his enemy. No, they were reunited once again. And so Rome is no longer the center of the empire. So he transferred the capital city of the empire from Rome to Byzantium. And he renamed Byzantium after him. So this is called the city of Constantine. So it is called Constantinople. The term Constantino plus Polis. The very city of Constantine. Constantinople. Constantinople. Now, 
while the capital was transferred to Constantinople, the, the emperor was no longer residing in Rome, but in Constantinople. Constantinople became the richest city in the entire universe. And Rome became poor. However, this is based on the Council of Chalcedon, Salig ng five patriarchy, the number one must be the Church of Rome. And of all patriarchs, the number one and the highest must be the Bishop of Rome. Second only Constantinople, because of political reason, dahil nandun ang city of the, the empire. Third is Alexandria, because it is the center of theolo theological civilization. Nandun lahat ng schools na pinakamatindi. Number four is Antioch, because it is the second city of St. Peter. Bago magpunta ng Rome si St. Peter, siya ang first bishop ng Antioch. At remember, dyan tayo unang tinawag na Christian. Dyan din unang tinawag na Catholic Church, ang Santa Iglesia in Antioch. Okay. And number five is Jerusalem. It's very important because it is the city where the Lord no died. Okay. So, pero ang center ng church is no longer in Jerusalem. Dali ka pinagpapatay ang mga katoliko doon. Three dance per sa Rome. Okay. <coughs> okay, so during this council, because of the prominence of the Eastern bishops, dahil nasa kanila ang emperor, naging powerful sila politically and financially. So many of them started challenging the Pope. But the Pope and the other bishop says, no matter how rich you are, Rome will still be the highest and the first because it is the apostolic see of St. Peter. And not only of St. Peter, pati the St. Paul. Doble yan. At yan ang see of the martyrs. Huh? Yan ang Santa Iglesia ng Tagumpay laban, la, laban sa mga masasamang emperador. So it is the number one see. Okay, so dahil dyan ang umpisa yung division, yung political division between the Orthodox and Catholic, yan ang pinag-umil. Power, authority, is the origin of division between the Catholics and the Orthodox. Okay. Next page, please. But the Council of Florence, they once again affirmed both Eastern and Western Church affirmed that the Bible has 73 books, 27 New Testament, and 46 Old Testament. Now, but the final, the final declaration was that of the Council of Trent. 1546. Ito na yung against Martin Luther. Because of Martin Luther, he removed seven books from the Bible. And not only the seven books, pati yung Epistle of James, pinatanggal niya. Oo. Kasi talo siya. Hello? Well, ibang topic yun. Ano? But the, the in the decree, the canonicis scripturis on the canon of the scriptures on its fourth session issued an anathema that those who will not accept the 73 books of the Bible will be condemned by the church. Anathema sin. And so until now, until now, uh, that is what we have. And that is consistent with what of St. Damasus, St. Jerome the Doctor, St. Athanasius, and all the bishops of the church is both East and West you know, for the past 2,000 years or during that time, 1,500 years. Okay, so the church is consistent okay, in establishing the sacred scriptures. Next page, please. 
Now, how the Bible was formed. Sabi lang kita tayo nagsasabi na Old Testament, New Testament. Ah, uh, hindi yan, walang sinabi si Lord Jesus, you know, guys, ito yung sa luma, bago ako isilang, Old Testament yun. Tapos, ito na bang bago, yung isusulat nyo later, pag umakyat na ako sa langit, magsusulat kayo, yan, ang tawag dyan ay New Testament. Walang ganyan. <laughs> it was the church, it was once again our saints. How oh, could develop that? Although the term, the term New Testament and Old Testament is found in the Bible, in, in the writings of St. Paul, no? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. No, who also had made us fit ministers of the New Testament, not in the letter but in the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life, no? Uh, it weakens. Okay, so there is the New Testament. Next page, please. Okay. But their senses were not made dull. For until this present day, the self-same veil in the reading of the Old Testament remaineth not taken away, because in Christ it is made void. Okay, so in that term, New Testament, Old Testament is found in in the writings of St. Paul. But it was not yet used being applied in the actual book of the Bible as first and second part. Sino na umpisa niya? Next page. St. Irenaeus, another Catholic apologist, one of the greatest uh, uh, bishop and defender of the faith, that their Old and New Testaments were first applied to the books of the Bible separating them into two parts by St. Irenaeus, the Bishop of Lyon, France. Okay, and later followed by Tertullian of Carthage, okay, and Origen of Alexandria, the two uh, of the great uh, writers and thinkers of the time, together with St. Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon. Tertullian didn't become a saint because he became a traitor to the faith. He became a Montanist later. Huh? Ito naman si Origen of Alexandria, hindi naging saint because he committed a theological error. Huh? Ano yung theological error niya? Apocatastasis. Na later on, everything will return back to its original state that even Satan will become good, etc. So, yun, yun ang heresy niya. Okay, so, hindi sila naging saint, but Saint Irenaeus became a saint and one of the greatest defender of the Holy Trinity. Huh? Great saint. And he is the best, the best. Uh, Patristic father who refuted Gnosticism. Ha? Para sa Gnosticism, may dalawang Diyos. Lahat, kasi ang turo ng Gnosticism, dualism. Sa daigdig, marami good things. Everything that is good comes from the good God. There are also a lot of evil. So everything that is bad or evil comes from the evil God. Ko equal yung dalawa niya, turo nila. Sabi ni St. Irenaeus, that is erroneous, that is heretical, and that is stupid. There is only one God. Okay? And that one God is good. Because being is one, being is true, being is good, being is beautiful. Evil comes with the absence of good and a distortion of what is good. <laughs> so, ganun. No? So, napakahalaga niya. Ano may mabal mananayin tayo sa topic, no? Uh, I, I'm just enjoying explaining it because I was once a professor of philosophy in the seminary. Okay, St. John Chrysostom, the Bishop of Constantinople, is the first to use the name Biblia. So, like that, Bible, Bible, Bible. 
Sino ang tumawag niyan? Sino ang pangalan niya na Biblia? Saint John Chrysostom. Huh? Bishop of Constantinople. During that time, Constantinople was not just separated from us, united tayo niya, kaya atin niya. Huh? He belongs to the, to the united era. Okay. So, referring to the collection of books of Old and New Testaments. Okay, so makikita natin na bumuna. Noong nakati siya sa that, okay, 73 books, merong Old Testament, New Testament, according to St. Irenaeus, but as a unified one book, ang tawag sa kanya, Biblia. Ha? Ta Biblia. No, Hagia Biblia. That is Holy Bible. Ano? Yung sabi naman ng Saint Jerome, no, Biblia Sacra. No, Sacra. No, it's in Latin. Okay. Next point. Bakit nagkaroon ng chapters? Ha? Nagkaroon ng chapters. The one who did is the Catholic Archbishop and professor you know, in, in uh, the University of Paris. Walang H po yung Paris. Uh, Paris. Okay. <laughs> okay. University of Paris, of Paris. Okay. And this is Archbishop Stephen Langton during the 13th century, 1226. He divided the text of the Bible into chapters. Kayo, sabi nila eh, na sabi ng mga iglesia, eh mali ang Catholic Church sa Ten Commandments, mali daw yung pagkakahati natin, kasi dapat yung ang Ten Commandment, yung huwag kang gagawa ng mga larawan. Sabi ng simbahan natin, hindi yan Second Commandment, part yan ang First, kabilang yan doon sa huwag kang gagawa, wala, wala kang ibang Diyos liban sa akin explanatory part na lang yan ng number one. Hindi, dapat number two yun. Sagot naman natin, sino kayo para magsabi sa simbahan kung paano makakatiin ang Biblia? Eh kami ang naglagay ng chapters niya. Kami ang magsasabi kung saan yan kabilang o hindi. Di ba? Kung sino ang naghati-hati into one book, tapos two parts, old and new, tapos chapters, divisions. Kami rin ang may karamatan na magsabi kung paano hahatiin ang Ten Commandments ayon sa Book of Exodus and Book of Deuteronomy. The one who has the authority to put the chapters and the verses is the same authority. No? With the power to determine which is which. <laughs> okay, next point, please. The Bible verses ng Old Testament, ang may gawa niyan, ay ang Dominican Scholar na napaka-cute. Ah, si Friar Santes Panini, Dominican. Ah, Dominican Bible Scholar. Okay. And the New Testament, Robert Estienne or Etienne. In the French, he was a Catholic professor at Sorbonne University. Unfortunately, later he became Protestant, but he did the verses when he was still Catholic. Well, when he was still Catholic, he only continued what Sante Spagnini, you know, Fray uh, Sante Spagnini had started. And both of them inserted the chapters and the verses in the Latin Vulgate of St. Jerome. Kaya ang kauna-unahang Biblia na may chapter and verses ay Catholic Bible. <laughs> Hindi King James Version. Oo. So, Latin Vulgate pa rin talaga ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat. Ha? Next page, please. Okay. Ito yung mga criteria. Bakit yung ibang aklat inalis unang-una? There must be divine inspiration. 
Ato ito ay inspiration. Siyempre, ikilos ang Panginoon dahil tunay na salita ka niya, yan naman ang tele. Yung mga peke, malalagas yan. Kasi hindi ginagawa niya ng Diyos eh. Ikalawa, apostolic origin. Sabi natin, teka muna, hindi naman nagsulat in Coptic. In Coptic language ang mga apostolis. Bakit yung mga Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, nakasulat in Coptic. Peke yan. Ang dami-dami pang balik na nang nakalagay. Ha? Ikalawa, patristic recognition. Ibig sabihin, kinupot siya ng mga fathers of the church na silang mga estudyante ng mga apostoles. Ha? So, napakahalaga nun. That's very important, you know, I studied theology. If you don't know it, under Reverend Father Luis Antonio Tagle of Cavite. When I was studying the theology in Tagaytay, Divine World School of Theology, professor ko si Father Tagle. Ha? Huh? Kaya po siya sabi na may iba na dudung-dudung ka rin. Mali iyan, dapat ka dyan. Excuse me, sino ba nag-aral kay Tagle? <laughs> Di ba? Sino ba ang tinuruan na tag, na, 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 na tagli? Di ba? Mga ganyan. Ang simbahan natin pag sinabi natin, hindi mo pa alam na si Pope Benedict, yan ay assistant ni St. John Paul II. Di ba? At si St. John Paul II, best friend, ni Pope St. Paul VI. Oh. Si Pope Paul VI, iyan ay asistan ni Pope Pius XII. Oh. Eh, if you pray the answer to it, to the question na, eh, si Hannibal Bunyini daw, yung, 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 yung nagtag, nagtagalog, nag, nag, nag-translate ng, na, ng Novus Ordo Mas, eh, masun daw. Pa, paano magiging masun yun? The one who appointed him in the Vatican, is Pope Pius XII. <laughs> Pipili ba naman si Pope Pius XII ng maso? Oh. Yung simbahan natin, patristic recognition. May authority. Sabihin, ah, ito, yan na, yan, no? From, from, from Pius XII to John XXIII, to Pope Paul VI, to John Paul I, to John Paul II, Benedict XVI, uh, Pope Francis, may continuity. And then, spiritual witness. Yung mga saints natin, yan ang ginagamit nila sa mga dasal nila at sa kanilang mga spiritual readings. Kalimbawa, may problema ka. Ano ang babasahin mo, Gospel of John? O Gospel of Thomas. <laughs> Walang sila ulong katoliko nung nasa alam yung Gospel of Thomas. Mabasahin ko kasi mas may, may problema ako. Hindi ang mabasahin mo. Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Huh? I am the bread of life. Di ba? Lahat ng katoliko, can, we can quote the Bible. Walang sinaulong katoliko na, eh, you know, according to the Gospel of Thomas, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Hello? Ano yan? Hindi ko alam yan. Pero pag sinabi mo, ako ang tinapay na nagbibigay buhay, ang sino mang kumain ang tinapay na ito ay hindi mamamatay kailanman. Eh, eh oh, Gospel of John yan, chapter 6, bread of life, discourse. Oh, is that? Ako ang uling pagkabuhay at ang buhay. Ang sino mang nananalig sa akin, kahit mamatay ay muling mabubuhay. At ang nabubuhay na nananalig sa akin na hindi mamamatay kailanman. Ay na nagsinabi ni Lord sa Gospel of Jeru, namatay si St. Lazarus. Si San Marta, kausap niya dyan. Alam natin yan. O, oh, di ba? Pag sa mapapanag ang mga dukha, no? sapagkat sa, sa kanila ang kaharian ng Lord. Beatitude yan. Sermon on the Mount, Gospel of Matthew. Oh. 
Alam natin yan. The, the Holy Spirit, the sensus fidei in us will rise and say that is truly the Word of God. Pero pag sinabi pang nagkunti, ito yung gospel of Thomas, ito yung ganyan. Ano yan? Sa demonyo yan. <laughs> hindi natin tatanggapin. You know, parang yung book of Mormon, meron daw si Brother, uh, uh, the book according to Mary. Hindi nyo pala yung tayong na Mary, yun ay pangalan ng demonyo sa Babylonia. Diba? They added some books in the Bible, yung Book of Mormon. Oh. Hmm. Na tumitimo yan sa isip at puso ng ating mga tao. At ang, ang panuntunan ngayon, kapag wala sa Biblia, mali. No? Yung mga doktrina nila, wala sa Biblia si Felix Manalo, wala sa Biblia si Eli Soriano, pero o sa kanila okay lang yun. Pero ina-apply sa atin yung strict sola scriptura na hindi nila may apply sa sarili nila. Now, paano natin yan sasagutin? Next page, please. Now, para sa kanila, the Bible alone, doctrine, uh, the Bible alone doctrine is not scriptural. It is nowhere taught in the Bible, in the Scriptures. Yang aral na yan, na Biblia lang ang basihan ng ating pananampalataya na pag wala sa Biblia, hindi dapat paniwalaan, ay mali. Dahil ang kahit na ang Biblia mismo, hindi yan itinuturo. Okay? Now, next page please. Okay. Now, ito yung sa yung root ng Bible alone heresy. Ito yung sabi ni Martin Luther, Scriptura sui ipsius interpress. That's Latin. The Bible is its own interpreter. Sabi sabi yun, basahin mo yung Biblia, unawain mo ito, at ang Biblia na mismo ang magdadala sa inyo sa katotohanan. Parang napakaganda. Di ba? Imagine, me and the Bible alone, hindi ko kailangan ng pare. Hindi ko kailangan ng Santo Papa. Me and the Bible alone. At pag binasa ko yan, malalaman ko kung ano yung katotohanan. Tama ba yun? Mali. Bakit? Kasi, kapag ginawa mo yun, ikaw ang magiging sarili mong interpreter ng salita ng Diyos. At kung makitid ang utak natin, Kulang tayo sa kaalaman, kulang tayo sa gabay ng Espiritu Santo, kulang tayo sa kabanalan, magpo-fall into heresy tayo. At alam naman natin na kahit na sa mga protestante, watak-watak sila away ng away dahil kanya-kanyang interpretasyon. Di ba kahit na si Martin Luther, nagkumiwaray sila Calvin, no, sila Swingley, at iba pa, hindi rin sila nagkaisa. Nagkawatak-watak sila. No? So kaya dahil dyan, dito natin makikita na napakahalaga na maunawaan natin na ang Biblia ay salita ng Diyos, yes? Subalit kinakailangan ng official interpretation and guidance of the church in order to be able to understand and interpret it correctly. Next point, please. Okay, yung theological implications. Is scripture alone is the source and rule of the Christian faith. So sabi nila, hindi na kailangan ang church. Hindi na kailangan ng mga bishops and priests. No, I mean, hindi na kailangan ng mga apostoles. Ah? The Bible is superior and judges on tradition. Parang napakaganda. Pero ang Biblia, hindi naman nagbibigay ng judgment. Halimbawa, Napakadaming born again sex sa US na pabor sa abortion. Although para sa ating Catholic, very clear sa Bible na ang abortion ay masama. Pero napakadaming sekta ng protestante, Baptist, Lutheran, ano, Methodist, ano, Presbyterians, na pabor sa abortion. 
Yet, nagbabasa sila ng Biblia. No? Ang simpaha natin, opposed sa same-sex marriage. Kasi sabi natin, ginawa ng Diyos ang tao, isang lalaki at isang babae, at pinagsama sila bilang mag-asawa. Kaya ang kasal, dapat isang babae at isang lalaki. Pero, yung mga pastor sa US, sinasabi, walang ganyan sinasabi ang Biblia. Ang Diyos nagmamahal sa lahat. Tinatanggap niya lahat. Kaya dapat tinatanggap Payagan yun na. No? Oo. Oh. Kaya, minigalize nila doon. Uh, only the Catholic Church ang pinakamalaking na nakikibaka. At ngayon, inaapi ang simbahan. Eh. Kapag hindi ka nag, ah, may Catholics, nagagawa siya ng, ano, ng, ng, ng cake, nagtitinda ng cake, eh, may dalawang badig na gusto mong pakasal. Gusto namin mag-order ng cake para sa aming wedding. E same-sex wedding. Sabi ng Catholic owner, hindi pwede. Kasi against yan sa faith ko. Hindi ko pwede ilagay dyan yung dekorasyon na dalawang lalaki. Diyan sa cake. Oh, kinakilangan isang babae, isang lalaki. Isang Cinderella, isang prinsipe. Hindi mo pwede dalawang prinsipe. Dinimanda sila. Dinimandahan ngayon, pinagbabayad sila ng 3 million. Now, with all these confusions, sino? Ay, magsasalita ba yung Bible? Oy, okay yan sa akin, ha? Payagan nyo na. Payagan nyo sila para lumigaya ang mga maldita na yan. Oh. Wala, hindi na ba magsasalita na ganyan yung Biblia eh. Hindi naman sasabihin ng Bible, ay ayoko ng abortion ha, kasi baby, kawawa naman yung baby, mamamatay. Ang cute-cute pa naman ng baby. Hindi. Kapag ang makasama maghiwalay, hindi naman sasabihin ng Biblia. Magbasa sila, hindi naman sasabihin ng Biblia, ay huwag kayo maghiwalay, magpatawaran kayo. Hindi. Ang Biblia, <clears throat> hindi yan direkta na magsasalita sa iyo. Kahit ang konstitusyon, subject yan to interpretations. Kaya kinakailangan ng Supreme Court, kinakailangan ng may judge na magbibigay ng final decision hinggil sa mga gaya na yan. Kaya the Lord established the church to be the Supreme Court to give us the official interpretation of the sacred scripture. Okay. So hindi pwede ang Bible ang magja-judge ng lahat ng tradisyon. Kasi ang hindi naman hindi naman person ang Biblia na magsasalita. No, ako ni Spirit, yes. Si Jesus, yes. Oh. Pero may problema tayo sa mga Lord, bubaba ka ha, wag desisyon ka ngayon. Hindi. Kaya na siya nang iwan ng mga apostoles. Next page, please. Now, Protestant rejection of sacred tradition. Ah, sabi nila, ito yung mga term, ito yung mga Bible verses na ginagamit nila. Sabi kanya, you made the commandment of tradition. Beware the tradition of men. Do not think beyond what is written. Ang tinutukoy dyan ng Panginoon Yesu Cristo ay ang mga superstitious beliefs. Ha? Ah? which is also being rejected by the Catholic Church in the CCC among superstitious beliefs ay hindi dapat paniwalaan. Okay. Next point, please. Okay. Now, ano yung ista ng simbahan natin? Sabi ng simbahan natin, hindi po pwede Bible alone lang. Bakit? Kasi yung bukal ng, ng kaligtasan, the funds of salvation, ay dalawa. Ha? Ano yan? Yung sacred scriptures and sacred tradition. Sabi ng simbahan natin. And they go together as one. And then the sacred tradition is the handing on of beliefs 
and practices both oral and written from the apostles which the church keeps until now. Halimbawa, hindi nyo ba napapansin na tuwing tayo ay nagminisa o nagsisimba, yung pari natin, hindi nakabarong Tagalog, hindi naka-Amerkana, nakagaya ng mga pastor, kung hindi nakadamit, nakagaya ng damit ng Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Yan ay apostolic tradition. Dahil ganyan ang suot ng Panginoong nung nagmisa siya, lahat ng apostoles, tuwing magmimisa sila, ganyan ang ayos nila. Hindi nakabarong, hindi naka-Amerkana, dahil hindi naman nagbarong at nag-Amerkana ang Panginoong Yesus. Ikalawa, hindi nyo ba natapansin na yung ating tinapay na tinatanggap sa misa ay hindi tumulad ng pandesal na may, na may, le, may levadura, may, 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 may le, leven bread, may lasa ng, 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 ng mantika, ng, ng salt, may lasa ng, may lasa ng, ano yan, ng mantikilya, o ng itlog. Hindi, siya ay walang lasa. Siya ay tinapay na walang levadura. Yan ay sacred tradition <clears throat> na ang ginamit ng Panginoon nung nagmisa siya sa Last Supper ay unleavened bread. Kaya hindi natin pwedeng gamitin ang pandeko, pandeleche, ah, pandesal. No. Hindi kung hindi tinapay na walang levadura. Sacred tradition yan. Bakit ang simbahan natin, pagpasok mo, ang nasa gitna, nasa unahan, lamesa? Sa kanila, podium lang. Sa atin, lamesa. Ang lahat ng Catholic Church, kung tinignan mo niya, may cross sa taas, may cross sa tuktok, may lamesa dun sa, sa, sa altar. Yan ay sacred tradition. Bakit? Kasi tuwing magtitipon sila ang pinakamahalagang worship, the Holy Mass. Kaya may Eucharistic table. Sacred tradition yan. Paano isasagawa yung misa o umpisahan sa side of the cross tapos mag the Lord be with you. Ha? Mag-ending uli ng the Lord be with you and may oh God bless you. Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yan ay sacred tradition na yung mga apostoles. Pag nagbibindisyon sila sa tao, bumakaganyan sila. They are using the power of the sign of the cross to remind us of the Lord Jesus died on the cross. So iyang mga bagay na yan, hindi yung lahat siya nakasumulat sa Biblia. Kasi kung susunod mo lang yung Biblia, paano ba tayo mag-worship? Kaya lang kada pastor, kanya-kanyang invento kung paano ang sumamba. Ay, lakasan mo yung amplifier. Tapos ay, ano yan, electric guitar. No? Apat na oras, puro lang sayawan. <laughs> Eh, ang aking invent ko, hindi mo alam eh. Halimbawa ko ako pare, walang sacred tradition. Nandyan sa akin, mag-worship namin ngayon, Sunday, ano ang gagawin ko? Siyempre, gagamit ka ng dramatization. Mga kapatid, sumana ng palata. Itaas po ninyo ang ating mga kamay. Iwagay-wagay. Kasi, mag-iisip ka. <laughs> Di ba? Kaya kanya-kanya silang drama, may pinaiiyak, may pinatipikit, may pinapabaliktan mga kung ano ng mga bagay. Ah, kinakailangan nila ng maraming dramatization. Pero sa atin, magmisa ang Pope Francis, magmisa ang Cardinal Tagle, magmisa ang ating Monsignor dito sa parokya, magpunta tayo sa kabilang parokya, magmisa tayo sa Baklaran, sa Quiapo sa Manila Cathedral, iisa ang misa natin. Essentially, essentially, 
mga accidentals lamang ang magbabago. Ha? Huh? Kasi unified tayo with one spring of salvation. With sacred scriptures and with sacred tradition. Napakahalaga niyan para sa atin. Ha? Huh? Paano pa natin isa-celebrate? Aalalahanin yung kamatayan ng Panginoon. Paano ba natin aalalahanin yung birthday ng Panginoon? Paano? Di ba? Hindi na natin minak na mag We are already guided by the church. No, bago, na, bago natin i-celebrate yung birthday ng Panginoon, meron tayong nine days novena mas na may simbang gabi tayo. Tapos may visa tayo, may visa de galio. Baka ganyan. Alam na natin yan. Very clear na sa atin yan. Kasi we are guided by apostolic tradition. Ha? So, kaya, the, how the apostles handed on to us the faith which we keep until now. Now, the Bible is part of the sacred tradition. Bakit? Kasi bago may sulat siya, ay bago may sulat siya, yung Biblia, siya ay part muna ng oral sacred tradition. Kasi maraming taon muna ang lumipas bago nagsulat ang mga apostoles. Now, ano ang patunay niyan? Ito ang sabi ni Apostol, ni, ng Evangelista sa Lucas, sa Lucas chapter 1, verse 1. Ganito po ang kanyang sinasabi, kagalang-galang na Teopino. Teopino means rin, beloved of God. Teo means God, Philos means lover or love. Okay. Marami na po ang nagsikap na sumulat tungkol sa mga bagay na naganap sa gitna namin. Ang kanilang sinulat ay ayon sa sinabi sa amin. Oh. Bago yun nila sinulat, tinuro muna ng mga apostoles. Hmm. Ngayon, sino nagsabi kay San Lucas? Ayon sa ating pananampalaya, si San Lucas ay sekretaryo o asistan ni Apostol San Pablo. At ang Apostol San Pablo naman ay kasakasama nila San Pedro at nila San Santiago. Oh. Nang mga nakasaksi nito buhat sa pasimula at nangaha ng salita. Ngayon, Nung sinulat ni San Lucas at paglapit ng anghel sa birhen, kanyang sinabi, Magalak ka! Ikaw na totoong pinakababahal! Ang Panginoon ay suma sa iyo. Nandun ba si San Lucas? Wala. Paano nalaman ni San Lucas yun? He got it from the Blessed Virgin Mary. Person. Dahil ang mahal na birhen, kanino nakatira? Kay San Juan. E saan ba nagpunta si San Pablo at si San Lucas? Ah, nagpunta sila sa Epeso. Kasama sa pinunta kanila ay ang Epeso. E saan ba tumira si St. John at si Mama Mary? Ah, sa Ephesus. <laughs> oh. So, yan ay mga bahagi ng history. Okay? Eh, hindi naman daw nakapunta sa Rome si St. Peter. Saan nagpunta si St. Peter? Nagpunta ba siya ng Iraq? Nagpunta ba siya ng China? Ng Taiwan? Nagpunta ba siya ng Kalayaan Island? Saan? Di ba? Okay. Hmm. Hindi naman December 25 ang birthday ng Panginoon. Kailan ay sinihilang ang Panginoon? Kung hindi December 25, kailan? Bago mo masabing mali iyan, dapat alam mo yung tama. Eh hindi ko rin alam. 
Wala nakasulat. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, ikaw ay ignorante. Kapag ignorante ka, huwag ka magdurundung. Wala sabihin mo mali yan. Hindi mo pala alam. Oh. Kung ikaw ay hindi engineer, tapos merong calculus na, form, na formula dyan, eh kahit pare ako, sabi mo, teka muna ba, kahit hindi ko naman, hindi naman, theology pinag-aralan ko, hindi naman, eh, hindi naman ako expert nito. Ah, ito mo yan ay batas. Eh, tatawagin ko ang attorney James. Ah? Oo. Oh. Gano'n eh, kung computer yan, eh, tatawagin ko yung IT graduate. Hindi magdunog-dunog na hindi mo alam. Eh, ang simbahan natin, we are the repository of the faith of the apostles because we are the church of Rome. We are an apostolic church. Next point, please. Biblical reputation of the Sola Escritura, number one. The Bible is not all inclusive. Walang sinasabi yung Bible, you know? Lahat ng kaalaman na sa akin na nakasulat na. Kaya wala na kayong dapat hanapin pa sa iba, wag na kayong magbasa na iba pang bagay, wag na kayong makinig sa mga fathers of the church na yan, wag na kayong makinig sa pop, magbasa lang kayo nito, complete na yung knowledge nyo. Hindi. Ang sabi, Truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of His disciples which are not written in this book. Marami pa palang ginawa. Kasi nung sinabi ng Panginoon, ang lahat ng kapangyarihan ay pinagkaloob sa akin sa langit at sa lupa. Humayo kayo at basbasan at bautismuhan ng mga tao. Ang sumampalataya at magpabautismo ay maliligtas. Bautismuhan nito sila sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Ayon sa tradisyon na ating simbahan, nung sinabi niya ng Panginoon, sinabi niya, bautismuhan nito sila sa ngala ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Kaya simula noon, lahat ng apostoles, pag nagbabasbas, on the sign of the cross lagi. Ha? Huh? So, kung paano pa, ano pa ang ayos sa Panginoon, kung ano pa ang ginawa niya? At pa, paano magbibigyan? Kasi sabi nila, ang Panginoon daw niluglog sa tubig. Walang nakasulat sa Biblia na ang Panginoon niluglog sa tubig. Yung sinang niluglog ng kanya ng Panginoon sa tubig na yung ulo, ilo. Wala! Mas sinabi, umahon mula sa tubig. Eh kahit ang tubig, lumusong ka na hanggang dito pag, pag gumadyan ka sa tubig. Pag gumadyan ka uli, umahon ka noon. Iba yung umahon sa tubig sa niluglog sa tubig. Walang sinabing inilubog siya sa tubig. <laughs> so, dyan natin makikita. Kaya mag-iingat kayo sa mga interpretations. Okay. Marami pang ginawa ang Panginoon na hindi na isulat. Ha? At isa dyan sa mga hindi na isulat, yung blow by blow, how to, how to do the last supper, no, the Holy Eucharist na pre-deserve ng simbahan. Well, may sign of the cross, may greeting, may penitential rite, may readings of the scriptures, pagkatapos ay may gospel, etc. Okay. Mark 4.33-34 And many such parables he spoke to them. Parami pong mga sinabi ang Panginoon. Hindi naman sinulat kung ano yun. Later on, ibibigay ko sa inyo. Merong isang quotation si St. Paul na sinabi ni Lord Jesus na hindi nakasulat sa kahit anong ebanghelyo. Ano yun? St. Paul quoted Jesus, It is better to give than to receive. Hindi yung sinulat ni St. John, hindi sinulat ni St. Matthew, hindi sinulat ni Mark and Luke. Remember, St. Mark hindi apostol si St. Mark. Pero bakit inaccept ang kanyang writing? Because he was the secretary and assistant of St. Peter. Bakit inaccept si St. Luke? Dahil siya ay assistant and secretary of St. Paul. Okay? Another thing, ito very famous. Okay na, di ba? Kanta, uh, As God has shown us by turning stones to bread. No, na ang Panginoong Diyos daw natin, ang Panginoong Jesus, 
transform ang stones into bread. Hindi nakasulat sa Biblia yun. Pero all Christians, both Protestants and Catholics, are saying it. Ha? Huh? Ano yun? Sacred tradition yun. Another thing. Ha? Huh? Bakit pag birthday ni Jesus, ang ating misa at celebration nag start midnight? At yan, both Protestant and Catholic accepted the birthday ni Jesus, midnight. Silent night, oh, holy night, all is calm. Kasi when the night was far spent, in the middle of the night, the Word of God was born. Oh, bakit ang celebration natin ng Christmas nag-start ang midnight? Sacred tradition yun na ang Panginoon Yesu Christo ay sinila ng midnight. So maraming mga bagay na akala natin simpleng bagay lang, hindi parte ng sacred tradition. So, bakit ipang yung Diyos ninyo may balbas? Eh uh, yan talaga ang itsura ng Panginoon Yesu Cristo. Di ba? Halimbawa, huwag magpunta ka sa luneta, nakakita ka ng status, ano, ay ito si Rizal. Eto naman si Lapu-Lapu. May hawak na kamak, nakabahag, may chineko, may uh, chineko na gano'n. Ah? Sa harap mo, Lapu-Lapu yan. Pag sinabi natin, hindi naman si Lapu-Lapu yan, hindi naman nakita si Lapu-Lapu, wala naman picture si Lapu-Lapu. And we as Filipinos, collectively, culturally, psychologically, we are 100% sure na ganyan ang itsura ni Lapu-Lapu. So ano yun? We are guided by tradition. So ang simbahan natin, may sacred tradition na ang Panginoong Yesu Cristo may buhok na hanggang shoulder at pagkatapos may balbas may divided chin. So pag pinakita ka ng buka ng Panginoong Yesu Cristo tapos kasi taba ni Martin Luther, parang Padre Damas o yung buka, ay eh, hindi si Cristo yan. Di ba? So yung mukha ng ating Panginoon Yesu Cristo, bakit iba-iba ang ah, pag iba-iba ang gumawa na artist, iba-iba rin ang kalalabasan. Pero may one, may commonality, the essence is the same. Okay. Next page please. Okay. Apostolic tradition attested by St. Paul. Now, sabi dito Now I praise you that you remember me in all of things. And hold fast the traditions, even as I deliver them unto you. So yan yung tinatawag natin apostolic tradition. The tradition of men must be rejected. Halimbawa, may magsabi sa atin, na kung may patay sa inyo, huwag ka magsuot ng pula. Kasi may mamamatay din uli sa inyong bahay kapag nagsuot ka ng pula. Anong sasabihin natin yan? Yan ay katangahan. Hindi tayo papatayin ng Panginoon dahil lang sa kulay pula. Hindi naman toro ang Panginoon na galit sa pula. Okay. Na kung may patay sa inyo, huwag magwawalis kasi mawalalabas lahat ng bala sa may mamamatay uli. Hindi papatay si Jesus sa atin dahil lang tayo ay nagwalis. Pag may patay, dapat nga mas malinis kasi para walang mga mikrobyo at walang germs na kumalat for hygienic purpose. Kaya yeah, mga superstitious beliefs na ganyan, hindi yan turo ng Santa Iglesia. Naku, eh, sabi sa ating horoscope, ay eh, dapat daw susuwertehin daw ako bukas pag ako ay nakasuot ng blue. Hindi totoo yan. Okay? No, hindi totoo yan. Pagpaniwalaan ng mga horoscope, horoscope na yan. Ha, bawal sa atin maniwala sa mga yan dahil yan ay new age teaching yan ay pagan thinking magtiwala ka sa Panginoon okay now to Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 15 therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught whether by 
free sell. Okay, so, so merong apostolic traditions by word, oral, and epistles written. Okay, written. Yung written, yun ang Bible. Ano, yun ang Bible. 73 books. Okay, yung oral, yun ang mga decrees ng ating Santa Iglesia. Another example niyan, noong nagdibate ang mga, noong panahon ng mga apostoles, ay inaaway si St. Paul. Dahil turo ni St. Paul, hindi na kinakailangan magpatuli para maging Catholic, para maging Christian. Hindi simpleng bagay, oh, patuli lang naman eh, ba't naman ngayon, nagtuli naman tayo. Tuli tayo for hygienic purpose, not for religious purpose. Ngayon, kasi ang para sa mga Hudyo, magiging member ka ng covenant if the male child is circumcised. So, religious purpose yun. So, kaya pag ni-require ka mag-circumcise muna before becoming Catholic, dapat maging member ka muna ng Judaism bago ka magiging Christian. Yun ang, yun ang debate doon. But St. Peter settled it without quoting the Bible. Wala siya sabi, according to what Moses had written. Wala. Sabi niya lang, mga kapatid, ang Espiritu Santo ay nangusap sa akin na tanggapin ang mga no, hindi kutyo. No, kaya binigyagan ko si Cornelio at ang kanyang buong pamilya. At dahil dito, huwag na tayong mag-impose pa ng iba pang requirements o criteria na hindi naman hinihingi sa atin ng Panginoon. O. Kaya dahil doon, hindi na requirement yun. Basta sumasampalataya o kaya ang magulang ay magtetestify, we give the sacrament of baptism. Okay. So, o sacred tradition ang ginamit ni St. Peter sa pagdedesisyon. Next point. Okay, the church must protect and pass on the deposit of the faith inherited from the apostles. So, yung deposit of the faith na yan, yan na ngayon yung tinatawang natin katechism, nandiyan encoded na yan. But at the same time, it must still be subjected to the interpretation of the church. Kasi kahit tulad ng Biblia, ang katechism pwede rin maniubrahin para maiba ang interpretasyon. Okay. So, sabi ni, ni St. Paul kay St. Timothy, what you heard from me. So, remember si St. Paul, hindi original na apostol. Oh, kanino niya nalaman yung mga alam niya sa pagtuturo? Kay St. Peter. Ah, Nag-stay siya kay St. Peter for 15 days. At tuwing may problema, nagpunta sila sa Jerusalem. ang mga apostoles kagaya nung sa Council of Jerusalem okay so sabi niya what you heard from me which you heard also from other apostles keep a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Jesus Christ guard the deposit of the faith the good deposit that was entrusted to you okay so ano yan sama si Jesus is God True God and true God. Inano na yan, kung trinistalize na ng mga councils natin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. So kasama na ito yung mga anghel, pati kaluluwa. Okay. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all the ages, eternal is Yah. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. From Him all things came into being. Talaga yung matindi, no? Yung pinakikita natin yung pagkajus ng ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Tapos yung same God na yan, God from God, light from light, eternally begotten by the Father. He was born of the virgin. Naging tao, sinilang. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. Okay. So, yan natin makikita. One person who is divine, 
became man and he suffered no and died etc i believe in the holy spirit ano the lord and giver of life ano ibig sabihin ng lord and giver of life just din siya pero hindi tatlo ang dios iisa pa rin no so uh, these are these are the explanations that is the the deposit of the faith sino magtatanggol niyan tayo kaya dapat alam natin yan ha huh? So hindi mo lang aalagaan na hindi mo alam. But you will use it for your sanctification. So O Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Kaya mga bishop natin at kahit kaming mga pare, na minsan may mga po, tayo mga CFT may mga forums. Minsan may mga forum or ideas na pumapasok. May lang, kinakailan ka namin magsalita na that is heretical. <laughs> That's wrong. Huh? So, sabi, may nagsabi ka, kanina doon sa core group, uh, may pinakikita isang YouTube na mayroong group ng CFD na nag-meeting. At sabi nila, the divine person per se cannot die. Eh, bakit namatay si Jesus? Si Jesus ba divine person or not? Divine person. Sabi nga natin, God from God. True God, from true God. O, si Kristo ba namatay? Oo. So, bakit yung sinasabi na yung divine person hindi namatay? E namatay si Kristo eh. Kaya nga at puro ng Council of Trent, God died. God was born. Bakit natin minamahal ang Santo Niño? Kasi Diyos yung batang yun. Ah, kaya ang kinakantahan natin ang O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem, come and behold him, born the king of angels, O come let us adore him. Ang mga adoration yan, latria yan. O, oh. Kung hindi pwede mabatay ang divine person, eh hindi rin siya pwedeng isilang. Hindi rin siya pwedeng maging bata. Di, hindi rin siya pwedeng maging holy yung karis. Paano ang Diyos ay makikig tinapay? So akala nila, ang kanilang pinagsasabi ay maganda, hindi nila alam. Islamic theology ang nasa utak nila. That is the story yan. Ha? Huh? Ang sinasabi natin, ang Diyos hindi na mamatay. Totoo yun. We are referring to the divine nature. And we are referring to God the Father and the, the entire Trinity. But pagdating kay Jesus, special case niya, kasi siya ay nagkatawang tao. Kaya kay Jesus, we say that God was born. God has a mother. Mama Mary is the mother of God. God became man. God suffered and died on the cross. God was buried. But God has risen again. Oh. Special case yung kay Jesus. Sina, pinag, hindi nila nililinaw yung, yung situation, yung theological section referring to the divine nature of God and to the incarnation of the Son of God. Magkaibang section yun ng theology. No? So, ikasabihin, mababaw ang panginawa sa Christology. Hmm? So, napakahalaga niyan. Ha? Huh? So, bakit Diba? Doon sa mga, sa mga pelikula, no? mga lumang pelikula ni, ni Christopher Lee, pag ginagyan na ng kulos yung Dracula, saan may na Dracula? <laughs> Bakit kasi? It's God. <laughs> It is the image of God. It reminds him that God defeated Satan on the cross. Eh kung tao lang yan, sasabihin ng demonyo, tao ka lang. 
Ang hell ako. Talo ka sa akin. Ba't ako matatakot dyan? Tao lang yan. Yung bisinisira nila ang buong salvation. Oh. Sabi natin si Jesus on the cross is redeemer. May redeemer ba namang tao lang? So makaganyan. So kaya yung, yung pananampalataya natin, interconnected yan. Isang bali, babagsak lahat. Father of God. Kasi ang Diyos hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng ina. So ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng magkatawang tao ang Diyos. Wasak na, sita na. Di ba? So, interconnected lahat yan. Kapag sinira mo yung Christology, ang incarnation, mawawasak ang redemption at saka salvation. At mawawasak din yung Trinity. Bakit? Kasi kasama doon sa Trinity, na yung second person ng Holy Trinity, nagkatawang tao, hindi kay man. Kapag sinabi mo, ang Diyos hindi pwedeng maging tao, English siya di manalong teologi na yan. Di ba? Di ba sa mga bihin, di ba yung debate, no? na yung ventilasyon, mga kapatid, ang Diyos pa ay namamatay. Hindi. Si Kristo ba ay namatay o hindi? Namatay. Ibig sabihin, si Kristo pa ay Diyos o tao lang. Tao lang! Ganun ang kanilang pananaw. So kaya, mag-ingat. Mag-ingat. So, we have to guard what has been entrusted to our care. No, and it is a duty. No, pa. Kaya nga, ay doon yung napapansin, ang CFD, hindi pwedeng maitayo sa isang na isang chapter ng walang pahintulot ng parish priest. Bakit? Kasi ang number one na teacher ng faith natin ay ang pura paroko. Ah, pag halimbawa, may saritong speaker, o kahit siya ay doktor, o lawyer, o ano pa ba, dapat ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Ano, teka, ang sabi ng pari, ay teka mo na, mali yan. That's heretical. We have to huli said. Huh? So this is St. Timothy, batang-batang pari na inordain as very young bishop ni St. Paul. Estudyante ni St. Paul. Next, please. Number four, the necessity of authority for efficient interpretation. So sabi, sa lumang tipan pala, sabi ni Jethro kay Moses, You have to teach ordinances and laws, but you must appoint competent men to lead the people. Ilang ang pinili ni Moises? Seventy. Kaya si Jesus pumili din ng seventy disciples. Sa ibig sabihin, Jesus created the church as the new Israel. So there must be competent authority to govern us on matters of the law and morality of God, the faith and morals. Ang problema ngayon sa atin, sa faith, okay. Pero pagdating sa morals, marami na sasabi, eh bakit naman itong mga pare ito nakikialam sa ganyan? Hindi na lang payagan yung mga bakla na gawin yung gusto. Eh ano naman, ano, kung siya ay kabit, okay lang yun. Eh at paano naman niya, kung yung mabahe niya, nabuntis, ay eh, teacher, nabuntis. Eh bakit paaalisin sa Catholic school? Eh hayaan na lang siya. Eh baka ganun bagay. So pag kami nagtuturo ng faith, okay, pero pagdating sa morals, ayaw ng tao. Kahit masama, ginagawang mabuti. Next page, please. Deuteronomy, from Old Testament Levitical priests are the one who are teaching and interpreting the law. In fact, disobedience to them 
was perishable by death. No? So sa atin naman niya, hindi naman tayo pinapatay. Pero kasi nabihan tayo, if we will not obey, no, we will not, oh, we will not listen on matters of faith and morals, we will die a spiritual death. Sa panahon natin ngayon, mas pinapangaral naman ang mas immoral ang pamumuhay kapag maraming lang, kapag ang politiko, maraming babae, ay okay lang yan kasi guwapo siya, may bigote siya, at mayaman siya, sikat siya, presidente siya. Diba, double standard at ang, ang tao. Ang sabi ng Pero, wag kang makikiyapid, pero pag si Herodes nakiyapid, okay lang sa mga tao. Bakit namatay siya sa Juan Bautista? Kasi sinabihan niya si Herodes, ibalik mo yung asawa na yung babae yan sa kanyang asawa. Di ba? At nagalit yung, yung babae. Ano ang anong hilingin kong reward sa pagsasayaw? Sabihin mo yung ulo ni Juan Bautista. Kung si San Juan Bautista, walang moral courage to teach what is right. Sasabihin niya lang, alam mo, King Hero, yung babae niyan, kaya yung kabit mo. Kasi eh, nagmamahala naman kayo. Alam ninyo, pag kayo nagmamahala, masaya kayo together, that's okay. Di ba? Gano sa atin dito, ganaganyan tayo. Pagdating sa si Jesus is God. O oh, talaga, Diyos si Jesus. He is my Lord. Ano, pakatakanta pa tayo. Jesus, you're the greatest name of all. Jesus. Ang ganda-ganda. Oh, pero pag sinabi na na, aja, nagsasama ng walang, ng walang kasay, okay lang yan, modern na ngayon. O kaya, kabit. Okay lang yan, nagmamahalan sila. O, di ba? Alam niyo, kawawa kami mga pare. Sabi ng Panginoon sa Ten Commandments, Huwag kang papatay. Mga drug addicts naman, mga putang inang yan, patayin na yan. Kung ikaw si Cardinal Tagle, kung ikaw si Archbishop Sok Villegas, sasabihin mo ba, ay oo, ka, okay lang, patayin na mga putang inang yan. <laughs> ano yung tuturo namin, sabi namin, mga kapatid, yung drug addicts na yan ay tao. At bilang tao, kung siya ay nagkamali, tulungan natin siya na makapagbagong buhay. Huwag naman natin papatayin. Di ba? Eh pag sinabi ko, huwag ka patayin na yan. Huwag kang makikiyapi. Pag nagsalita kami na yan, ang mag-asawa dapat maging tapat sa isa't isa. Sobra naman yung mga pare na yan, old passion na, modern na ngayon. Kung saan ka maligaya, kahit na may asawa na yan, basta maligaya kayo, okay. No? Napakagandang sabihin na the deposit of the faith must be preserved. Ha? To proclaim with courage the truth. Mahirap yan. Sino ang inumura ng tao? Hindi naman kayo. Halimbawa, maraming nabuntis. Mara Nag-increase yung, yung teen pregnancies. Ang bumurahin, hindi kayo. Hindi naman sabi niya mga parisyon na ng St. Joseph, ng mga walang hiyayan. Hindi. Ang sasabi, anong ginagawa ng mga pare? Anong ginagawa ng mga obispo? Kawawa naman ang Cardinal Tagle. Ha? Kung pinutian na ng buhok na virgin, siya pa ang sisisihin dahil sa nagbultisan. Kami ang minumura ng taong bayan. Kami ang sinisisi. Ha? At pag pinagtanggol namin yung buhay, yung mga pare na yan, kampi sa mga drug addicts. Ang hirap. <laughs> Di ba? Kasi papatayin ka si Herodes, hindi yan masasatisfy. Pag kinontra mo si Herodes o si Pilato, ipapapatay ka niya, ipakukulong ka niya. Kaya pa, kung ang Panginoon Yesu Christ gusto niya mabuhay ng mahaba, sana pinunta niya si Herodes. Alam mo, King Herod, actually, hindi naman ako talaga ang tunay na hari, ikaw. 
Ano at uh, susunod ako gusto mo ipapatay mga baby. So sige, kailan okay, patayin mo na lang yung mga baby sa Bethlehem? Ipapatay mo na rin yung baby sa Nazareth. May babies pa sa Bethsaida, sa Caperna. O ipapatay mo na silang lahat. Basta itira mo na lang ako. Pero bawa ko sa iyo. <laughs> diba? Pag ang kulit ko magsabing, ako, marami akong babae, marami akong chicks. Kasi itong mga walang iya mga obispo na ito, mga ipokrito. Ano, sila ang pipiliin ng mga tao. Hindi pipiliin ng tao yung katulad ni Kristo. Dahil yung mga katulad ni Kristo ay pakukulong. Yun ang mga mamamatay. Ang pipiliin ng mga tao, yung tulad ni Herodes at ni Pilato. Tila mo si Kristo na matay sa Cruz, sa Duan Bautista, pinumutan ng ulo. Si San Pedro, pinatmo ng patiwari. Ha? Si Herodes pa, tsaka si Pilato. Napakulong, hindi. Namatay sila sa sarap. Sa daigdig na ito, pakihinga ng tao ng sanlibutan. Ang aral ng sanlibutan. But the church, no matter what, may mga tataksil sa atin, may mga, may mga kakampi sa mga Herodes at mga Pilato. But the faithful will die in fidelity to the faith. And I hope we will be one of them. <laughs> Ayoko rin mamatay. <laughs> uh, but we have to be faithful until the end. Uh, and we have to pray. Now, The priests were the teachers yeah, of the law. So Ezra, priest and scribe, taught the law to the Israelites. So kahit sa lumang tipan pa lang, hindi pwede kung sino-sino lang pwede magdulong-dulong na i-interpret niya ang Mosaic Law. They go to Ezra, to Nehemiah, to Joshua. No? May, mga, may authority. May authority. Next. Okay. The fullness of divine revelation was especially entrusted to the apostles and not just to everybody. So after speaking parables to the people, privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. He explained everything. And so that is the reason why in the parish, the head of all catechists is the parish priest. The head of all ministers is the parish priest. The head of the entire council is the parish priest. We are all here to support him. But the parish priest must be in communion with the bishop. Because the bishop is a successor of the apostle. Ngayon, ang bishop naman natin, hindi rin naman siya nagsasarili lang. He is in full communion with the successor of St. Peter. That's why we are united. We have one faith. Huh? The fullness of divine revelation is being given to us because we are part of the apostolic church with the proper authorities to govern and guide us. Next page. Okay. In persona Christi. Nasabi, lagi sinasabi, pag nagbibisa ang pare, hindi niya lang representante ang kanyang sarili. He is in persona Christi. He is the ambassador of Christ. Like the ambassador, the envoy ng government. Pag sinaktan mo yung ambassador, there will be diplomatic protest that is an insult to the entire nation. Huh? Kaya once a priest is celebrating the Mass, he is representing Jesus and all the entire church in persona Christi. So Jesus said, whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. So yung protestant, me and the Bible, alam, hindi na kailangan ng mga bishops, hindi na kailangan ng pare. Kung basahin mo Biblia ko, nung pagka-interpret mo, yun na. Kaya pag sabi ni Manalo ng, oh, huwag kang matakot. Pag ikaw ay lumakad sa bagyo, ikaw ay hindi masasaktan. Sabi ni Manalo, ako ito ah. <laughs> oh, may anghel na bumaba mula sa silangan. Ako ito. Anghel ako. 
Ati pa. Manda ka kabali uyad. Ayun ang gusto nila. Tanggalin yung church authority to say na we are all equal naman. Parang napakaganda. But the Lord Jesus doesn't like that. Why? He chose the apostles to be the leaders of the church. My leadership in the church. Next point. Same feeling in the Ethiopian eunuch. Ito yung after na pagbaba ng Holy Spirit, ah, nagbabasa yung eunuch ng, iba, ng letter of, of the prophet Isaiah. Tapos nakita siya ni St. Philip. Sabi ni St. Philip, naiintindihan mo ba yung binabasa mo? Sabi niya, patahe ko kung maiintindihan ito kung walang magpapaliwanan sa akin. And St. Philip explained eh, it. Ano lang yun na? Book of the prophet Isaiah. And from that, ang lahat patungo sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, hindi kay Felix Manalo. Mm. So, na-convert. Ah, hindi po naging iglesia ni Manalo, naging katoliko. Ang Ethiopian Yuno. Kaya, Ethiopia is apostolic in origin. Ah, talaga totoo ba yung mga churches sila na 2,000 year old na? Okay. Next point. The warnings of St. Peter that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. Ha? Ah? Lalo na kayo sa panahon ito, taong-taong, may mga born again pastor na nagsama, magugunaw na ang daigdig, magugunaw na ang daigdig. Pagdating naman ang tatlang araw na yun, bokya, hindi naman, na, hindi naman nagaganap. So we must not allow ourselves to be deceived. Ha? At uh, minsan may lumalapit sa akin, Father, hinula daw ni Mama Mary na malapit na yung pagwawakas ng tete sa Fatima, pagkatapos daw ay magiging heretical daw ang Pope tsaka yung Rome. Sabi ko, yan ay kalukuhan at kasinungalingan. Walang sinabing ganyan si Mama Mary. Ang sabi ni Mama Mary, at the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to be converted and a period of peace shall be given to the world. Paano daw magtatagumpay siya? Through the Pope. Hindi yung Pope yung matitiwan. Yung mawawala sa pananampalataya. Ha? So, kaya... Uh, we have to be faithful to the Pope. How are we sure that we will not uh, enter into heresy? Remain with the Pope. Remain with the Pope. Okay. So as uh, Paul does in all his letters, some of them are difficult to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. So maraming mga ignorante na papahamak ang kanilang kaluluwa dahil iniinterpret nila sa kanilang sariling pangintindi labang ang banal na kasulatan. Kaya sa ating Santa Iglesia, the Bible must always be interpreted in the light of the official teachings of the Church. Ah, kaya pag-aralan natin ang katekismo ng ating pananampalataya. Okay, next. Okay, so we are ambassadors of Christ. God is making His appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So the apostles are ambassadors of Christ. Okay, and so are our bishops and priests who are the successors of the apostles. Actually, ang successor of the apostles are the bishops. Ang priests are only assistance to the bishops. Uh, they are the successors of the apostles. Kaya kada bishop has absolute power as administrator, executive, and judicial. Uh, judicial. And also legislative in his own diocese. And the Pope has supreme power of administrative, legislative, and judicial Universally, kasi successor siya ni St. Peter. Okay, next point please. The Bible is not all clear. 
So some passages of the Bible are difficult to understand. Ah, kagaya pag binasa mo yung Book of Revelation. So, Tate, pag binabasa ko yung Book of Revelation, nakakatakot maraming mga dragon, magugunaw daw ang daigdig. Ano pag kahulugan ng Book of Revelation? Ang turo ng Book of Revelation, huwag kang matakot. Kasi God will, be, will defeat Satan and will give us eternal life. Hindi tayo hindi yung sinulat para takutin tayo. Kundi para sabihin tayo na sa buhay natin, mayroong labanan ng mabuti at masama. Naglalaban ang Diyos at si Satanas. We have to be faithful to God despite the difficulties of life and challenges of life. But if we will remain faithful with God, we shall be with Christ forever. Yun lang. Yun ang meaning nun. Okay. So some passages of the Bible are subject to various interpretations. Some passages of the Bible are subject to personal distortion. So kaya napakahalaga ng paggabay ng Santa Iglesia. Number next page. The apostles and evangelists attested to sacred and oral extra-scriptural tradition. Kalimbawa, ito. Sumasamba kayo sa Diyos Diyosan, sabi ni Ele Soriano. Sinasamba ninyo ang inyong ulik ba? Sa sino pa ulik ba na yan ang inaatake niya? Yung pala ang puong nasareno. Demonyo daw ang larawan ng puong nasareno. Ang tawag niya si ulik ba? Gusto mo, buti ako atakihin ang sakit sa puso. Tala, tumaas yung presyon ko. Sabi ko, sa hindi niya pa alam na ayon sa Biblia, ang Nazareno ay si Kristo. At natupa, at siya ay tumira sa bayan ng Nazaret upang matupad ang sinasabi ng mga propeta na siya ay tatawagin Nazareno. Eh sila ang tumatawag kay Jesus. Tayo ang katumpara ng gula. Pero ang point ko dyan, Basahin nyo yung buong Old Testament, walang nakasulat. Na, at sinabi ni Propeta Jeremias o pre Propeta Isayas, siya ay tatawaging Nazareno. Wala. Yung kinote ni St. Matthew, that is from sacred tradition of the Old Testament. Pero ang sabi niya pa, mga propeta, hindi lang isang propeta ng salita niyan, marami. Hindi lang may sulat, pero... For sure, it was taught by the prophet Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and everything. Merong iba, pinipilit nila yun daw. Isaiah chapter 11, isang sanga mula sa lahi ni David ang bubukal. Yung yun daw yung sanga, ang tawag nila ay Nesir. Yung Nesir na yun daw yung root ng Nazareno. Na parang malabo. No? Oh, malabo. Oh, pero ganun pa man, Ah, talaga Nazareno ang Panginoong Heso Kristo dahil siya ay taga Nazaret. Okay? Oh, siya ay taga Nazaret dahil si Mama Mary ay tumira sa Nazaret. Di ba? Mary of Nazaret and Joseph of Nazaret. Okay. Oh, the, the seat of Moses. Ha? Huh? Oh, wala lang mo nakasulat sa Biblia sa lumat na may seat of Moses as a point of authority. Pero sabi ni Jesus, ah, the Pharisees, they sit on the seat of Moses. Kaya tinatawag na yung, yung chair is a symbol of authority. Kaya meron tayong feast yesterday ng chair of St. Peter. Kada bishop may chair. Yan ay apostolic see. Kaya pag pumunta ka ng Manila Cathedral, lalo sa kapsal, sa side, napakagandang marmol na upuan na may logo ni ka ng, ng Archbishop of Manila. Napakaganda. Kada katedral meron nun. Okay. Kaya ang tawa, yung katedral, ayan ay chair. Kaya sabihin yan, ang basilica where the chair of the bishop is. Okay? So sabi ni St. Paul, Acts 20.35, sabi daw ni Jesus, it is better to give than to receive. Wala yan sa lahat ng Ibanghelyo. 
yan ay sacred tradition. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. Now when the Israelites were traveling, there was a rock following them. And that rock is Christ. Walang nakasulat yan sa lumang tipan. Meron lang rock na hinampas ni Moses tumulo yung tubig. Pero walang rock na naglalakad na, suma, na sumusunod sa mga Israelita. That is a sacred tradition from the Old Testament. Next point please. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 8 refers to Janus and Jambres opposing Moses that is also not found in the Old Testament. Okay, James 5.17 For three years and six months, hindi umulan dahil nalalangin si, si Prophet Elijah na wag umulan. Pwede rin nakasulat siya, no? yung prayer ni sa, na nalalangin siya. What is stated that there was no rain for three years but no special prayer no, of the Prophet Elijah for that. Jude 9 Sabi ni St. Jude, St. Michael the Archangel fought the devil for the body of Moses. Nung namatay si Moses sa book of Exodus and Deuteronomy, walang nakasulat na pinag-awayan ni St. Michael at ng demonyo yung bangkay niya. Okay? That is sacred tradition. Okay. Pero nung sinulat nila yan, walang nagreklamo, walang nagsabi, Uy, Jude, mali ka, hindi naman, hindi naman totoo yan. Kasi alam nilang lahat eh. They know it. <laughs> yeah, they know it. Yeah. Oh. Okay, next. Okay, the Bible categorically and explicitly teaches sacred oral tradition alongside the scriptures. The existence of living traditions within the apostolic teachings. The Christian people are firmly grounded in the faith by adhering to these traditions. These are oral and scriptural. So kaya, by what right? Anong karapatan ng mga protestante na i-reject ang sacred and oral tradition ng Santa Iglesia? Next point, please. Can I have water, please? Okay. Ang sola eskriptura ay hindi kailanman nabanggit sa Biblia. Ha? Next page. Okay. Ito yung mga ginagamit nilang talata. Okay, sabi nila, We believe na Biblia lang ang dapat sundin. Dahil sa talatang ito, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, and 17, every scripture is inspired of God, is also profitable. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ang mabait ninyo. <laughs> ah, bakit napakasarap ang tubig dito sa Makati? Sabi, hindi kanya kasarap at tubig. Okay. So, every scripture is inspired of God. Kita? Yun daw, Biblia, inspired. Tapos, profitable for teaching. So, siya na yung kailangan para sa pagturo. Siya na yung kailangan para mag-correct. Siya na yung kailangan for instruction sa kabanalan para maging complete ang man of God. So, hindi na kailangan ng iba pa. Pa-sacred, sacred tradition pa kayo, ay sapat na yung Biblia. O yan yung argument ni Dr. James Watt. Yan, yan yung number one debater na mga born again all over the world. Kasi sabi niya, yung the word na inspired sa wikang Greek ay teonyostos. Ha, pronunciation niya, Theonyostos. Theonyostos, ibig sabihin, hiningahan ng Diyos. God breathed. Oh, eh kung God breathed ang Biblia, eh ay hindi mo na kailangan pa ng iba pang bagay. Anong sagot natin dyan? Next page please. Ah, sorry po. Nung argument na yan, ang tawag natin dyan ay hindi God breathed, kung hindi, 
Bad breath theology. Bakit? Yung, yung breath of God, binigay hindi sa Biblia lang. <laughs> hindi nyo parang nalilikha ng Diyos ang tao. Ano yung sabi sa Genesis 2.7? At nilikha ng Diyos ang tao mula sa alabok ng lupa. Hinugisan, hiningahan sa dalawang butas ng ino. <laughs> At ang tao ay naging kaluluwang may buhay. Oo. Oh. Eh pwede mo magsabihin, hindi na kailangan ng Biblia kasi bawat tao hiningahan ng Diyos. Pwede ba yon? Hindi po hiningahan ng Diyos ang tao. Hindi na kailangan ng elepante. Hindi na kailangan ng aso. Hindi na kailangan ng church. Hindi na kailangan ng Biblia. Kailangan ng Biblia, kailangan din yung tao. <laughs> Di ba? John chapter 20 verse 21 to 22. And Jesus told them, Peace be with you. Huh? Receive the Holy Spirit. And He breathed on them. <sighs> As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. Whatsoever sins you forgive shall be forgiven. Whatsoever sins you do not forgive will not be forgiven. So, hindi sinabi ng Pahinok Turkit, hiningahan niya. Hiningahan ng Diyos ang mga apostoles. Hindi na kailangan ng Biblia. Hindi na kailangan ng Church. Hindi na kailangan ng Holy Eucharist. So, yung Biblia, hiningahan ng Diyos. Mahalaga yan, syempre. Yung tao, nilikha ng Diyos, hiningahan niya. Kaya ka pa, 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 pag namatay yung tao, nang isa, tumitigil ang paghinga. Oh, mahalaga din yung tao. Eh, yung mga apostol, yung leaders of the church, mahalaga din ba yan? Yes, they are also important. So, the breath of God is given by God, not to one, but to three. Huh? Actually, kaya daw ang tubig na kapagbibigay buhay dahil hiningahan ng Diyos. Yan ay sa Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. When God created everything in the beginning, everything was void and darkness hovers everything. But the Spirit of God hovered over the water and God said, let there be light and there was light. Okay. So, kasi mababaw ang kanilang paranaw sa Espiritu Santo, sa works of the Holy Spirit. Kaya bad breath argument yan. Okay, next. Yan. So, tsaka yung word na useful. Walang sinasa Useful but not sufficient. Hindi siya yung kaisa-isang kailangan para sa pagtuturo. Ha? Kasi... Inutusan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo ang mga apostoles na magturo at ipasa yung misyon na yun sa mga leader ng simbahan. Kaya St. Timothy, Mark, and, and, and Luke, Barnabas, and everything, and, and, and others. Huh? And then, the scriptures mentioned by St. Paul in verse 15 is the Old Testament. Yung binabagit niya yung scriptures doon, hindi pa kasama ng New Testament. Kung hindi repairing to Old Testament, it is absurd to say na Old Testament alone is sufficient for salvation. That's absurd. And then sabi niya, the Greek artios, to be perfect, to complete, is not accompanied by only or solely. It refers to the man of God so that the man of God will be perfected. Yan ay perfection by grace to be holy, hindi to be soul, interpreter of the teachings of God or to be the, the only source of salvation. Okay, next point please. Okay, so sa letter of James, sabi niya, perseverance makes perfect. Ibig sabihin ba niyan? Hindi na natin kailangan ng ibang bagay, hindi natin kailangan ng faith, ng love, ng hope, perseverance lang ang for salvation. Hindi. We need all virtues to be perfect. 
Huh? So, yeah, they're, they're use of, uh, of uh, I don't know, uh, sacred scripture is distorted. They will distort a word of God to suit no, their distorted heresy, which is sola scriptura. Makikita ninyo si St. James ay kamukha ni Jesus. This is St. James the less. Hindi ito St. James the greater na kapatid ni San Juan. Bakit kamukha ni Jesus? Kasi pinsan niya. Yan ay kapatid ni St. Jude. Okay? Ang nakalain nila si Santa Maria of Cleofa. Cleofe. Okay? Next page, please. Okay. So sabi nila sa Revelation chapter 22, Verse 18 to 19, ang sino mang magbawas at magdagdag sa Biblia ay susumpay papatawan ng kaparusahan. Eh ang mga katoliko, nagdagdag! Nagdagdag ng pitong aklat sa Biblia. Kano pa dinagtag, nagdagdag sa mga sacred tradisyon na yan. Wala namang, wala naman yan. <laughs> Ganyan yung kanila mga palilira. Okay. So, next uh, page. Catholic response. Yung warning na yun na huwag magdadagdag, sa book of Revelation lang yun. Uh, it's not about the whole Bible. Uh, actually, sa Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse, ito huwag magdadag. Eh, kung susunti natin yun with distorted interpretation, ibig sabihin yun, illegal at sacrilegious ang New Testament kasi dinagdag natin siya sa Old Testament. Ha? Ano yung binabanggit doon ang pagdadagdag? Sige, huwag natin babaguhin yung turo ng Panginoon. Ha? We must not change what the Lord had given. Now, next page. Okay. Actually, ang mga protestante ang nagdagdag at nagbawas. Martin Luther, yung word na alone sa Romans chapter 3 verse 28, para lumabas yung faith alone. Inamin nila yan. Inamin nila na talagang dinagdag ni Martin Luther yun. Ha? Accepted nila yun. Oh. Luther removed the epistle of James. Oh, kasi nakalagay dun eh. No, now you see that man is justified by works also and not by faith alone. Huh? And, uh, a faith without work is dead. Sapul na sapul siya ron. And then he removed the seven deuterocanonical books from the canon of the Old Testament. Tapos mapapansin ninyo, pag nagdasal, pag kumanta yung mga protestants ng Our Father, may dagdag. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May dagtag. Sa akin wala yun. No? No. Uh, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Amen. You for that is the kingdom, the power and the glory, saan natin yung ginagamit sa Holy Mass. Pero, hindi nakadikit sa our father, meron muna sila sabi yung pare natin, bago na ano yun. Ngayon, yung Protestant Bible na, na King James Version, dinagdag nila yun. Ay nakalagay yan sa, sa Bible nila. Oh. Pero, yung mga scholar, sinabi na mali yun. Hindi yung, yung for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Hindi yun part ng sacred scriptures. Meron lang isang book na, may, na, na, na nagsusulat, kasi mga books na nagsusulat ang Bible. Is yung for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory doon sa Biblia. To signify na yun ay dinudugtong ng simbahan sa Misa. Nagkamali ng kopya ang mga protestante, pati yung under parenthesis, kinopya nila. Ha? Kaya, dyan natin makikita, yung simbahan natin guided by the Holy Spirit na hindi pwedeng madagdagan o mabawasan illegally 
erroneously ang ating Biblia. We are protected by the Holy Spirit. Next point, please. Number eight, the Bible refers to the church as the pillar and ground of truth. So the pillar and ground of truth is not the Bible, but the church. And it is the church that has the power to decide because it has the key of St. Peter to bind and to lose. It means it can interpret correctly and officially. Hmm? So kaya kalimbawa, may tanong sa atin, uh, pwede bang mag-abortion? Sabi ng Santo Papa, no, abortion is murder. Same-sex marriage, no, marriage is only for man and a woman. Eh, condom na lang pwede na yan, Holy Father, kasi manipis lang naman yun. Uh, no pa rin. Sobra naman ng Holy Father, masyado ka namang killjoy. Pati ba naman na hindi na nga abortion na nga, mali. Eh, condom na lang, ipagbabawal mo pa. Ano sabi ni St. Paul Paul VI? Condom is prohibited not for murder of children, but for protection of women. Pa, paano na yung protection of women? Yun, eh, kung paano kung gusto naman ng babae? Di ba? Oh. Contraceptives are prohibited so that the males will not use the body of women for as sex objects. Ah, sabi. Ano sabi ng binak? Maliligo, ang ganda-ganda ko. I love you. Pag nakuha niya na yung gusto niya, iiwan niya. Eh, wala namang mabubuhay eh. Okay lang yan. Kasi may kondom. Pag iniwan niya isang mapahe, pupunta na naman siya doon sa isang dalaga. Sabi niya naman, I love you. Kaya yan ay dinibelop sa ang bansa. Sa mga bansa na may culture ng one night stand only. Nagkatitigan sa bar, oh, nagkatitigan, ah, ang guwapo niya, ang ganda niya, magsisiping sila, ang kinabukasan, thank you, bye-bye. Walang responsibility, walang dignity, walang respect sa value ng human body of a woman. Kasi para sa kanila, sex is only for pleasure. Ha? Huh? At ang katawan ng babae ay para usan lang. Sabi ng Santo Papa, no. Sex is must be in the context of marriage and it must be open to life. Sino na saan yan? Humanity. Ni Saint Pope Paul VI at Veritatis Splendor ni Saint John Paul the Great. Familiaris Consortio ni St. John Paul the Great. Ah, so, the, the church, eh, yung lolo mo matanda na, inutil na, wala ng trabaho yan, ang gastos-gastos naman, pakainin na matandang yan. Tapos nagtatrabaho tayong lahat, babantayan mo yung matandang yan, saksakan na lang niya ng eleksyon para matodas na. Di ba? At tawag ba si Kiling? Oh, sabi ng pop, no. Diba? Oh. Eh, paano pag tayo naman tumantay? Matindong matandang paring na ito. Kaya inutil naman na ito. Ganyan, wala na. Oh, kamakawa na ba si Father Ate pag tanda? Sasaksaka ng injection ni Miko. <laughs> oh, diba? Wakit yan. Yung sinyo, makita yung simbahan natin. Dito sa atin, yung mga lola natin, sosyal. Nanonood ng TV siya, ng telenovela sa hapon. Tapos alam niya lahat ng balita. Tapos pag uwi mo galing ng trabaho, sa ba ngayon ka na? Saan ka galing? Eh, sosyal sila. Eh, Tapos kalaro yung mga apo, di ba? Kaya niyayakan ang lola, niyayakapin niya, nalikat. Sa kanila, hindi. Home for the agent. At pag inutil na, saksakan niyo na lang ng eleksyon. Pati. So, Napakahalaga na merong church, merong pope, 
na magsasabi sa atin kung ano yung tama at mali. Officially, we are guided. Otherwise, kanya-kanya na lang. Pag gusto tumatay, papatay. Di ba? Lahat ng gustong gawin, lahat okay. At lahat may dahilan, lahat may excuse. Di ba? The roads to hell are, few, are, are full of excuses. And there are nice excuses. <laughs> oh. Mas masawa daw, mas masarap. Next. Okay, the paraclete will lead you. The apostles, ah, not just the Bible. But the apostles will lead you, referring to the universals, the authority of the church, to all truth. Okay? Jesus commissioned the apostles to preach and to teach and convert the whole world, go out to all the world, baptize them. Huh? The Lord commissioned persons. The faith is to be passed through preaching, not just writing, not writing only. Huh? The, pre the command is to preach. Wala lang kumang itong right. Oh, inuutusan ko kayo na magsulat. Wala. Di sana ang kinuha niya mga apostolates, yung mga best writers. Di ba? Si Homer. Mga ganun. Hindi. Mga mainista pa nga eh. Hmm. Bakit maraming sulat si San Pablo? Dahil siya pinaka-educated sa kanilang lahat. Hindi niyo ba alam na si San Pablo ay sumang umlaude? Eh ni Philosopher Gamaliel sa klase niya. At si San Pablo dating pare sa iyo. <laughs> Kaya well educated. Okay? Mga ganun. Next. Christ will guide the church forever. I will be with you forever. Referring to you, to the persons, to the people comprising the church. The powers of hell will not prevail against you. Sinong kinakausap dyan? Si St. Peter. Huh? The keys of heaven, the, the power to teach and to govern was given to St. Peter and to the apostles. Huh? Yung final authority on matters of disputes is the church. Pag nagkasala yung kapatid mo, kausapin mo. Pag hindi pa nakilig, tumakawag ka pa ng isa o dalawang saksi. Pag hindi pa nakilig sa kanila, bring to the church. Pag hindi pa nakilig sa church, ituring mo siyang publikano. <coughs> so, the final authority is the church. At ano, sinundan niyo ni Jesus, ano man ang talian niyo sa lupa, tatalian sa langit. Ano man ang tatalian niyo sa, kalagan niyo sa lupa, kakalagan sa langit. Kaya all apostles have that power. Pero kay St. Peter, he has that power universally. Okay, kaya universal ang power ng Pope. Okay, next point. Okay, the church produced the Bible and not vice versa. Okay, so napag-aralan na natin yan kanina. No? We studied that earlier. Next page, please. Okay, so the scriptura is unhistorical. Okay, walang pundasyon sa kasaysayan. For 1,300 years, the Christian world believes that the source of faith is sacred tradition and sacred scriptures under the guidance of the magisterium. Sino ang unang-unang nagturo ng sola scriptura before Martin Luther? Although hindi siya nagpasikat ito si Martin Luther, si John Wycliffe, ah, 14th century. Pero ang nagpropagate niyan, ang German heretic na si Martin Luther. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, yan ay inventong aral. Next point. Propagation of the Bible. The Bible didn't become available in mass production for the people until the 15th century. But listen to this. May accusation sa church na sabi na yung mga Biblia daw nung araw, hindi pinababasa ng Catholic Church sa mga tao. Kinakadena. That is a big lie. Kaya yung nakakadena, para hindi manakaw. Para mabasa ng lahat. Kasi during that time, wala pang printing press. Yung Biblia, 
sinusulat kamay yan ng mga monks. Kaya kada isang Biblia, it will take at least 9 to 12 years bago ba isulat. Kaya yung meron lang kopya ng Biblia, konting lugar, mga monastery, tapos mga katedral, ah, at mga oratorio mga, na, ng mga madre. Kaya tsaka yung university, eh, sa University of Paris, University of Salamanca, ah, ganyan, University of Milan, ah, na, na, Oxford University, yan ang mga Catholic Church na nagtayo ng mga yan. Okay? May isa silang kopya. Lahat kadena yun, lahat pupunta doon. Magbabasa. No? In principio, uh, mabasahin nila. Pag siya siya magre-reflect, aalis. May isa na namang nalapit. Pupunta naman siya sa kabila sa gospel of man. Pupasahin nila naman. At punta naman siya, magdadasal siya, luluhod siya. Be, para lahat makabasa. Kaya yung kinadena, kasi it takes about 9 to 12 years para na makabuo ng isang Biblia. At lahat yun, ang gaganda pa naman kasi may mga special letterings pa yan, may mga drawings pa na nakalagay doon. O, special calligraphy yun. Ay yung tinta, napakamahal ng tinta nung araw. Hindi yung, yung modern ball pen, wala pa yan. Ha? Ano pa yun? Balahibo pa ng agila. <laughs> Yung pinansusulat doon, balahibo ng agila. Kaya malalaki yung mga letra. Ha? Kaya hindi nila alam yung historical circumstances. Ha? Hindi nila alam yung sir- historical circumstances. No na invento ng Catholic scientist sa Johannes Gutenberg, yung printing press of 1447, the first book printed was the Bible. Doon lang magdamag, makakabuo ng mga 1,000 copy ng Bible. So, doon siya nag-impisang mag-spread. Ha? Hindi natin itinago. Kung tinago natin mo yung Johannes, huwag mo i-print ka yan, bawal yan. Ha? Hindi. Inutusan pa talaga siya at yun ang kanyang ginawa. Ginawa niya yun to proclaim the word of God. And he did it. Because alam niya, hindi prohibited na ipang, uh, ipangalagana ang salita ng Diyos. Next page, please. The Bible is not self-authenticating. The epistle of James, Jude, and Revelation were previously disputed as the word of God until the Catholic Church settled the matter officially. Okay, at ang tinanggap natin, nung inalis niya yung Espesel of James, napahiya si Luther. Kahit na yung mga sarili niyang mga kakampi, sabi ko, ibalik mo yan. Ha? Kung wala kang karapatang gawin yan, wala kang K. Ha? Meron ka lang uh, MKK. <laughs> okay. Now, kagaya na binanggit ko kanina, some books like the Gospel of Matthew, walang title. Walang name ng writer. Sino ang nagsabi sa atin na Gospel of Matthew yan? Catholic Church. Pag sabi, ay mali kayo. Eh, sino nagsulat yan? Si Pula po. Hindi <laughs> ba? Not a single book of the Bible contains the list, the canon. Walang nagsabi, eto po yung listahan ng Biblia, Genesis, Exodus. Actually, even the name. Hindi Hebrew ang name, Greek. Bakit? Kasi Greek ang language ng church during the apostolic times. Na Genesis, ex, odo. Ex means out, odo means way, out of the way, means departure. Hmm? Greek name, sa Deuteronomy. Huh? So yan ay, yan ay concept to achieve. Oh. A- a- ano pa ang proof natin ang Septuagint ay talagang officially Word of God na ayaw i-recognize. Ayaw i-recognize sa mga protestante at saka ng mga, ng, ng, ano, ng mga parisayo. Ha? Even the names ng books of the Old Testament, kahit ano pang lengguahe ang gamitin, they always remain in Greek as the church named them. 
No, Genesis, Exodus. Oh. Okay. Next, I. There are variations in existing topics. Variances. Pero sino magsasabi kung alam yung tama? Ano ang dapat sundin? The church. Uh, the church. Next point. Number 12. So the scriptura bears bad fruit. Kapag me and the Bible alone, kanya-kanya tayong interpretasyon yan. Ha? Pag halimbawa na no, dumati si Ma, ang ina ni Jesus at ang kanya mga kapatid, ay may mga anak pala si Maria sa ibang baba, sa ibang lalaki. <laughs> sa uh, may iba pa palang anak. Ganon. Hey, then, yung salitang Adelphoy, isa sa translation yan ay relatives. No relatives. Ah, hindi yan automatic blood siblings. Paano tayo nakasigurado na hindi yung blood siblings ni Jesus? Isa sa divine title ni Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 18. Jesus is the only begotten son. Ay only begotten siya, son siya ng ama. Pero hindi kay Mary. Inan niya si Maria. Kung siya ay may kapatid kay Maria, hindi na siya only begotten son maging sa langit o sa lupa. Kung siya ay only begotten son in heaven, he must be only begotten son on earth. Kabastusan yun sa kanya na only begotten siya sa heaven. Pagdating dito sa lupa, hindi only begotten son. Absolute yun. Okay. So kaya mga protestante mismo, away-away sila. Pareho sa oras scriptura, hindi makaitindihan si Manalo at si Soriano. At kahit na mga baptist, may first baptist, second baptist, kung ano-ano pa, reform baptist, unreform baptist, etc. It makes a final and definitive and binding in palibor interpretation of the Bible untenable. Wala nang magiging tunay at kaisay sa interpretasyon ng Biblia. Lahat na lang puro-puro. At panguli, that is too subjective. And it makes every Bible reader a Pope. Ayaw ng mga protestante sa Pope, pero in Paksola Escritura makes every protestant a Pope. Dahil me and the Bible alone. Ako ang interpreter ng Biblia. Kaya dahil dyan, kanya-kanya silang gawa at invento ng sekta. Kaya ang tawag natin sa kanila, they are theological babel. No? Theological babel. Watak-wata, away-away, walang pagkakaintindihan. We are 1.3 billion Catholics all over the world, but we are united in faith and morals and in government and administration under one pope with our bishops and we have the sacred scriptures and the sacred traditions under the authority of the one magisterium of the church okay next okay so that's it any question <laughs>